Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 8 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll understand how to retrieve the last generated identity column value. In SQL Server, we can use scope underscore identity, etet identity, or ident underscore current functions to retrieve the last generated identity column value. In this session, we'll also talk about the differences between these three approaches of retrieving the identity column value. Now, if you haven't watched part 7 of this video series, I strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. Now, let's create two different tables. So, let's say I have a table called create table test1. It's going to have an ID column which is of type integer and I want this column to be identity column with C des1 and increment des1 and I want a value column which is going to be nware care of 20. Okay, let's create another table and let's call it test2. Alright, let's create these two tables now. Execute the query, refresh the tables folder and you should see both this test1 and test2. Now, Let's insert a record into test1 table. Insert into test1 values. And if you remember, in test1, ID column is an identity column, so we don't have to supply a value for that when we insert a record into this table. So just supply the value for name, I mean the value column. Okay, so I'm going to pass x to this value column of test1 table. Now, when we insert this record, what's going to happen? A record gets inserted into this test1 table. Now, let's retrieve the data that's there. So, select star from test1. So, when you retrieve the row, this ID column is automatically generated by SQL Server and it got inserted into this table. Now, let's say I want this generated, the last generated identity column to be retrieved Okay, how can I do that? Basically, one way is to use scope identity function. Okay, there's a function called scope identity within SQL Server which we can use. So select scope identity. So when I press F5, look at that. The last generated identity column value is 1, so I get that. Let's say, let's insert this record again. Now, there's another record inserted. If I press F5, look at that the last generated identity column value is 2. Okay, So I have the scope identity function. Now it turns out that there is another you know, global variable that we can use at at identity. So there is another you know, way to retrieve the last generated identity column value. So select at at identity when I execute this. Let's execute both of them together. So when I execute both of them together, what's happening, you know, they, they give us the same result. So then what's the difference between these two? Let's understand that with an example. Now the, re re the reason why we have created two tables, you know, you'll understand that now. Okay, let me create a trigger on test1 table. Now we haven't spoken about trigger set, which we'll be talking about in a in a later session in a great detail but for now understand that you can create a trigger on a table for a specific action for example let's say I have this test one table when I insert a row into this table I want some processing to be done automatically so is that possible yes we can do that how is it possible using triggers so we can create a trigger on a table for a specific action for example whenever somebody inserts a row into test one table I want another row to be automatically insert I mean another row to be automatically inserted into test2 table by a trigger okay so let's create a trigger on test1 table so create trigger let's call this tr for insert on test1 table for what action for insert action as begin and so your trigger definition goes between this begin and end statements now if you look at this one we are creating a trigger called tr for insert on test1 table for insert action 
So whenever somebody inserts a row into test one table, whatever you specify here will be executed. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a row into test two table. So insert into test two values, and I'm going to say here maybe a value of why 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 now if you remember in test 2 again we have an id column and value column and id is an identity column okay so let's create this trigger and execute this okay so we have now test 1 and test 2 table and if you remember on test 2 test 1 table we have an insert trigger as well so let's select and see what's the current state of the data. In test one record, we have two record. In test one table, we have two records. In test two table, we don't have any records. Now, when I execute this insert statement, what's going to happen? This trigger is also get, going to get fired. So this trigger now will insert a record into test two table. So now, when we execute this insert query, there are two rows that are going to be inserted. One row into test one table, another row by the trigger into test two table. Okay? And then once we do that, let's take these two. Okay, let's insert the value first. So when I press F, I look at that, you you get this message one row affected twice. That's because one for this insert statement and one for the trigger itself. So now when we execute these two, look at the result. Okay. Scope identity gave me number three, whereas at at identity gave me number one. Now let's execute. Okay. So three is from test one table. One is from test two table. Okay. So what's the difference between scope identity and data identity? Now the similarity is both of them returns the last generated value. Now scope identity returns the last generated value in the same session. Session is nothing but a connection. So if you look at this, I, I just have one query editor window open, which is connecting to the SQL server. So I just have one session to the SQL server. So in the same session and within the same scope, Okay, so if you look at this, I just have this insert statement. When I execute this, you know, the, the scope is just this insert statement. So within the scope, okay, scope identity has returned a value, which is 3. But whereas at that identity, you know, when this statement got executed, there is a trigger defined on that table, and trigger inserted another row into another table, which in turn generated another identity column value, Okay, added identity returned that value. Okay, so if you look at the presentation, scope identity returns the last generated identity value in the same session and in the same scope, whereas added identity returns the last generated identity value in the same session but across any scope. All right, now let's understand what do we mean by ident underscore current function. You know, when do we actually use this? And what's the difference between this and the rest of these two? Now, if you look at this, ident underscore current function, you know, basically, if you look at the function name itself, it's expecting a table name parameter, meaning you pass the name of a table. So when you pass the name of a table there, it's going to give you the last generated identity column value for that table. Okay? But across any session and any scope. Okay? Now session is nothing but a connection to the SQL server, a new connection. Okay? So let's see. Now you can assume that this as one session. So let's say user one session is this one. Let's open another query editor window. So this is like another session. Okay? Now let's say I am inserting a value into test two table. So insert into test two values. I'm going to say maybe ZZZ. And let's take the same query and go to user two's vendor. Okay, so now it's like this is one session and this is another session. Okay, now. Let's say 
select ident underscore current function and look at this this function expects a table name the intelligence shows that you need to pass in the table name parameter here so let's pass the table name which is nothing but test2 alright so let's execute this query so insert into test2 okay and we are executing that in user one's connection so execute that let's go to user two session and execute this one okay and within user one session I am running this ident underscore current I mean all these statements okay let's run them and then we'll understand okay so scope identity at at identity now look at this both of them are returning number two because they operate only within the current session they don't consider the other sessions but whereas ident underscore current function okay it operates across any session but for that test two table so if you look at test two table it should have got three records now and the last record was inserted by this user two session okay which is three the identity column value is three so your identity ident underscore current function returns the last generated identity column value for that table across any session and any scope whereas at at identity returns the last generated identity value within the same session that means which in the within the same connection but across any scope but whereas scope identity returns the last generated identity column value within the same session and within the same scope okay most of the times in reality we use scope underscore identity function to retrieve the last generated identity value so that we can return that back to the user for example if you have an application where maybe a customer is registering you know with your company or with a, with your product you know you need to give him a product ID okay so as soon as they you know they register and the record is inserted into the table we need to select the the record that has just in, that has just been inserted you know the identity column value for that record and then return it back to the application so it can be displayed on that web page and the user will know okay this is my customer number okay so usually in order to retrieve the um, last generated identity column we use scope underscore identity function but there are other options as well available and we have seen the differences between them in this session on this slide you can find the resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day